So in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to use Sensei to match on annotations and amend the annotations. The actual annotation I'm going to match and amend is an at disabled. And what I want to do is find any at disabled that doesn't have a reason, then add a reason in because it's generally a good idea to explain to people why we have disabled these tests. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this disabled and use Alt Enter which will allow me to create a new recipe. And I'm going to start from scratch. I'm going to put it into my blog videos cookbook. And typically this will be the cookbook that's stored in the project, but I'm keeping it slightly separate because when you download the Sensei blog examples from GitHub, it will have all these recipes in there. So the first thing I'm going to do is give it a name and I'm going to write, remember to add a disabled description. And then short description, uh, disabled should really have a description explaining why. And let's make this a warning for the moment. And I will create and edit this recipe. So we've now got the recipe editor up here. Let me try and format this a little bit so that we can see it. So we can see that Sensei is currently searching the code for a method call. What I want to do is look for an annotation. And now we can see that in the preview, it's matched all the annotations in the code. But what I want to do is match a particular type of annotation. And I could just write disabled and it will match that. But what I'm gonna do is disabled that's fully qualified so that I know that in the future, this will only match the JUnit 5 rules. Now we can see at the moment it's matched both disables because I haven't told it to only match those without a set of parameters. So there we go. And we want the parameters to be the empty set. So now we've said, and this is clear if you look at the YAML, we're gonna search for an annotation which has the type disabled without any parameters. And in the preview, we can see that it's matched the one at disabled in the code that doesn't have a parameter. So if I save this now, then it would store in the cookbook. But what I really want to do is make sure that I remember to add a quick fix because whilst this will match in the code, I also want to be able to fix it. So I'm going to rename this to say add a to do comment parameter. And we're going to use a rewrite rule. So let me just format this a little bit to make it a little bit easier to see. So currently we're rewriting self, which is the at disabled annotation to be nothing. But what I really want is to have at disabled with the comment. So I'm going to show variables so I can see what I'm passing in. And what I'm going to say is I want to use the template for this because this rewrite rule is based on a mustache template. So dot is passing it in as the variable. Then I can just write the code that I want to see after this. And you can see this being shown in the preview. And I'm going to write a to do add a description here. Then you can see the preview. If I did this quick fix, it would add this place marker comment in the at disabled. So if I save this now, the main code will show me that disabled line as a warning. We can see that it's highlighted there. And now if I click on that and do alt enter, I can now choose the quick fix from Sensei to add a comment parameter. And now I can actually fix this because I've got my reminder in my code for what I need to do. And what we've done fairly quickly there is to match a disabled annotation without any parameters and change that annotation. So now if I ever get to the point where I find an at disabled in my code, I can easily add in a comment and then just amend that place marker.